Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about the Novavax protein vaccine and we're gonna break it down as to what it looks like and contrast it against mRNA vaccines which is typically the topic of conversations in our videos. So my name is Dr. Mikola Rashik of Mara Genomics and let's get started. So what are the advantages of protein vaccines is the main one is that it delivers protein directly at the injection site. How that is contrasted against the mRNA vaccines is that mRNA vaccines, these, these genetic injections, they introduce the mRNA blueprint, which is then subsequently used to produce the protein. However, how much of the blueprint is used to produce the protein is not controlled, so you cannot truly control the amount of protein that is produced post-vaccination, post-injection, okay, versus with a protein vaccine, you can control the exact amount of protein you are injecting into an individual. And that could have some potential advantages because for example, you can then control the level of adverse events. Because if you know that if you have this level of protein post injection and you result with this many, this many different adverse events, you can potentially correlate the adverse events to the amount of of injection protein in the injection so that's the primary advantage there another big advantage is that the protein itself used in this vaccine is mutated differently than how the proteins were mutated uh, in uh, the mRNA templates so the proteins that are supposed to be produced from mRNAs they are mutated they are mutated in such a way so that they cannot um, they cannot participate in the spike protein cannot participate in a fusion process That's what spike proteins do. That's the purpose of the spike protein. We discussed this previously in one of our videos Where the spike protein eventually the purpose of it is to unfold its arms grab an adjacent cell but and bring that cell towards the virus so that the virus membrane can fuse with the cell membrane now the same thing could happen when cells express spike protein as well and they on the on a cell first and they, so that means one cell could in theory fuse with another so the mrna vaccines were mutated to prevent this behavior so same with novavax vaccine protein it's mutated so that it cannot participate in this fusion basically the mutation introduces an ability of the spike protein to unfold those arms so but Spike protein in using Novavax has another set of mutations that might be very advantageous that mRNA vaccines simply lack. And the, basically they mutated the site of cleavage, the fur, furin cleavage site. Now that's very important because you do need that cleavage to help infect the cells. So by having this cleavage site, it really helps to promote viral infection. And even with the mRNA vaccines, even though the spike protein can no longer participate in the fusion, one problem with retaining the cleavage site, which is what the mRNA vaccines still do, is that we do not know what happens with those fragments of the spike protein post, the cle post cleavage. We do not fully yet know whether these are benign or potentially toxic. So that is still yet to be worked out. So by preventing from this cleavage to ever occurring, you just simply potentially remove that entire problem because you no longer have those fragments, spike protein fragments floating around in a circulation. So that means if they were to be toxic, you're no longer having them around. So that's another advantage. Now the spike proteins themselves, they are embedded in a, in a tiny little ball of fat. So remember all of the cells, membranes, they're made out of very thin skinny, layer of fat those are called lipid molecules same thing with this vaccine the proteins are embedded in a, in fat molecules lipids they're not the natural they're they're a synthetic form of lipids they're called polysorbate 80 but they are considered to be safe um, because they're already used for example as one of the food additives so we can rest assured that they're okay to use. So that's the actual protein vaccine. However, the protein vaccine itself also comes with an adjuvant. So adjuvants are any compounds or basically anything that is 
co-injected in order to stimulate the immune system. So it's basically to provoke immune system reaction at the site of injection. That's basically to trigger immune cells to come to the site of injection, recognize that something is going on there and trigger the alarm. And this way, speed up the process of immune system response to the actual vaccine. So that's why we add adjuvants is to really just promote the response to the spike protein. And this adjuvant that is used in Novavax vaccine is called Matrix M. It was actually developed and patented by Novavax company. And it's already considered to be clinically safe and it's already used in multiple other vaccines. It is very interesting one. There's, there's, it's basically two different fractions of compounds isolated from specific plant extracts. Those fractions are mixed with other fat molecules, i.e. lipids and cholesterol, which is also a very common, common participant in cell membrane. So it's very often found in cell membranes. And together they create these three-dimensional circular structures that are the adjuvant. And those are, those are the structures that the immune system reacts to and responds to and triggers a response and as a consequence helps to also trigger response to the spike protein. So the adjuvant seems okay uh, as well as the component of Novavax vaccine also seem okay as well. If there are any potential issues with this vaccine then one potential issue is the fact that the vaccine themselves are actually produced inside insect cells. So what that means is that the protein itself will not be will not be coated with sugar molecules in the same fashion that you would expect if that protein was built inside human cells. So when you get infected with a virus or if you get injected with the vaccination and the spike protein is produced inside our human cells those spike proteins are decorated with sugar molecules in a very specific fashion and that's because it's the cells themselves that attach the, those sugar molecules now obviously if the spike protein of novavax vaccines is built inside insect cells then it will not have that specific human based pattern of sugar attachments. So I do not know what that means in terms of the consequences of immune system response long term. So that's still something that uh, needs to be worked out. And the other issue is that the amount of spike protein injected with the Novavax vaccine is very high. It's about five micrograms. The reason why you need this high amount in comparison, let's give you comparison first. So in one of the previous videos, I talked about that typically post-vaccination or post-infection, typically there's about 70 picograms of spike protein floating per mill milliliter of blood. So that would mean that if you were to take all of the blood out of individual, it would still be way less than 0.5 micrograms of spike protein. Versus here we're injecting at least 10 times more than that with the Novavax vaccine. So why do you need to have such a high level of injection of spike protein is because you need to make sure that you can promote proper stimulation of the immune system response. So that's the dogma that has been basically part of the vaccine world where you need to put enough antigen in the injection site in order to see a response. However, we don't fully actually know what is the proper amount of antigen that should be used in general to elicit the best, smartest response in a body. That science is yet to be worked out in detail. It has been studied in the past for a long time, but we don't yet fully have all the answers. So the best paper that I saw on this topic was from actually NIH right prior to the pandemic. So that's good because we know that that information was unbiased based on current informational environment. And basically the authors of that publication were proposing that lower antigen amounts might be better and safer than higher antigen amounts. 
and that's based on preliminary observations. The take home message from these authors was that higher level of antigen amounts when, upon injection with vaccine result in production of T cells that are responsive to only high amounts of antigen afterwards. And in contrast, if you inject low amounts of antigen, so very low amount of spike protein, you produce T cells that are responsive to lower amounts of antigen post-infection, meaning such T cells are more sensitive and therefore could have the advantage of being able to clear the infection faster and easier and more efficiently than post-vaccination with large amounts of antigen. And one of the ways that reason why such T cells are not as responsive is because to some degree, some of them might experience T cell exhaustions. We covered that topic in one of our videos as well. Some of them might literally just die because of the overstimulation from the antigen. So that is yet to work out. And I don't know whether we can yet state with with absolute certainty whether the amount of spike protein injected in the Novavax vaccine is the best amount in order to elicit best quality of immune response that we might need further studies to know that for sure but as I mentioned the advantage there is that the spike protein amount post injection cannot change cannot fluctuate it's one and the same amount there is nothing that is being introduced in that vaccine that would allow remaking of the spike protein so once that spike protein is in the system it will eventually be destroyed and there is no possibility of remaking it so that's that's definitely the main difference between the protein based vaccine and the genetic vaccines such as the mrna vaccines that we've been discussing all right, if you made it this far, I wanted to let you know we have another COVID Q&A coming up. So come and check it out. This basically, we take questions from the audience. We do collect top 10 questions first from uh, either YouTube videos or emails. And then it's open mic from the audience. So then anyone in the audience can ask any questions. We welcome all levels, really. This is, these events are meant for everyone. So we invite all of you. We have another event coming up as well. And this one is uh, an event for business owners. We are introducing a wellness program. This is me, I get together with two other experts, financial advisor and psychologist. And together we talk about program on how a person can take advantage of different tricks in order to basically promote their best well-being and then we're talking about financial well-being psychological well-being that's mental health well-being and then physiological well-being which is my component with a interesting twist of using dna mapping in order to learn how one can take advantage of their physical well-being so we think that basically post pandemic there is a lot of trauma going on a lot of recovery needed especially in the workforce as well so we thought this would be very interesting program for business owners to basically make sure that their workers can perform the best and we all want to perform the best so check it out this one's free for all the business owners and we look forward to seeing you there all right guys if you did like this information give us a like leave a comment <laughs> subscribe to the channel and share the video this is how we grow and we definitely look forward to seeing you in another installment. Bye everyone.